everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, welcome to how to get the listing signed every single time. Go ahead and put in the chat box your city and state. I want to see where you all are from. And while you're doing that, my name is Emily Baker, and I'm an executive maps coach. I'm out of Ozark, Missouri. And I have led a large listing team, listing leads to setting over 75 listing appointments month over month and signing over 50 listings every single month. So I've been in it and know how to um, go from listing lead gen to listing signed and everything in between. So that's what we're going to talk about. And I co-lead the mega listing agent with my partner, Aaron, and Aaron's going to kick us off. That's right. Thanks, Emily. So again, I'm also MAPS Executive Coach Aaron Simons, uh, located in San Diego. I saw someone, someone in here is also from San Diego, Emily. Um, again, I've been selling real estate for going on 19 years with 1,200 listings taken. So between me and you, Emily, I think we know a thing or two about getting listings signed, correct? Yeah. So let's just jump right into it, because this is, I think, one of the most exciting calls we do. And this is part of our MLA series. And so what you guys are going to hear today is just a fraction of what we teach in Mega Listing Agent. And we have the next one launching when, Emily? We have the next one launching May 3rd. May 3rd. All right. So if you like what you hear today, and if you've been part of the other promers and you want to get all of it, May 3rd is coming up quickly. So let's jump into it. All right. So to get the listing signed every time, I'm going to give some, some ground rules here, if that's okay. All right. And this is just from our experience, having gone on all the listings that we have. Now, Emily, we probably shouldn't have to say this first point because I know everyone here was on time. But number one, be on time. Why is that so important? Yeah, most agents are late, right? It's a trait of being a high I mm -hmm. uh, sociability factor. So most agents are late. So being early at a listing appointment uh, and really being on time is 10 minutes early. So you get there 10 minutes early, you knock on the door five minutes before, and you acknowledge that you're five minutes early to set yourself apart from most other agents who are interviewing um, to take the listing. Because as they say in the military, on time is late. On time is late. Be early. In fact, we always had a goal that when we were ringing the bell or knocking on the door, we wanted to hear the vacuum running. Because if you go on enough listings, what you know is that the last thing that the sellers are doing before you get there is they're putting perfect vacuum marks on the floor, right? So on time is late. Okay, now, number two, check their body language. So when we're at the closing table, right, and we're going through the presentation, what's their body language telling you? So Emily, if I'm leaning forward like this and I'm nodding my head as you're presenting, is that a good sign? Yeah, absolutely, you're engaged. Yeah, if I'm if I'm sitting back and I've got my arms across my chest, right, and I'm breathing heavily, right, on the borderline of hyperventilating with sweat running down my brow, what's that telling you? Yeah, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. What you're saying is causing a physical experience that is not good for you. All yeah. right. So check their body language. I'll never forget it. We were at a listening appointment one time, and they actually had the key on the table when we arrived. It was right there in the middle of the table. And the more we spoke, the closer that key got back to them. And eventually they took the key and they put it under the mat. So you gotta make sure you're watching their body language and pay attention to what it's telling you. Okay, now, also, we're there to take a listing, but we're there to help them achieve their goal. So we have to make sure that throughout the presentation, we're referring back to their motivation over and over again, right? Because it's not about selling the house, it's about what selling that house is gonna allow them to do. And the more we focus on the motivation, right, the less they're going to get distracted with things that they don't need to get distracted with. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Motivation moves. All right. Now, sometimes we're at that table and we're going through a presentation or we're getting to the end of it and things get a little bit tense, right? And, and, and the way that you can back that away is through what we call a pattern interrupt. Right. So let's say they're getting really intense on a certain, you know, subject or topic or, or issue that really isn't an issue and we need to move them off of it. Sometimes, Emily, what we'll do is we'll sit back and we'll say, you know what, you know, Mr. Seller, uh, one thing just occurred to me when we start showing the property. I know you've got a dog here. Where's the dog going to be? Right. Or, you know, you know what, as I'm looking at these floors, what type of wood floors are these? 
right? So sometimes a pattern interrupt, if things are getting tense, whether it's around commission or price or whatever, and if you need to bring the temperature down a little bit, pattern interrupt. You know what? I just had a thought. It just occurred to me. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay. Now, also, Emily, one of the things that we have to do is use their names often. So when I said your name, what does it cause you to do? Alert. <laughs> Alert. Alert. Yeah, perk up and pay attention. Yep. So if we want them listening to what we're saying, especially when we're getting to the really important part called sign the contract, use their names, right? Because what that does is it, you know, instead of them thinking about what they're gonna make for dinner or getting back to watching whatever show on Netflix they were watching before we got there, right? By using their name refocuses them into the conversation we're having and it alerts them, pay attention, right? Because if they're not paying attention and we're trying to close, they're going to just deflect. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And then remember, oftentimes there's more than one seller. Focus on them both, right? So if we're using names, use both names. All right. And then here's my favorite. Stop talking when distractions happen. Emily, have you ever been in an appointment and you're sitting here, you're talking to the sellers and all of a sudden one of them has to get up because they have to go take care of the kids or let the dog out or do something? Yep. A fatal error that I see made all the time is the agent will keep presenting. And then all of a sudden that person comes back, it's time to close and they've missed a portion of the presentation. So you can't close if they're not there listening to it. Right. And same thing is true. If we show up at a listing appointment and not all the decision makers are there, what do we do? Reschedule it. Right. We cannot present to one decision maker because you've taken that person and you've now turned them into the, your salesperson and they're not going to do as great of a job as you would. So no matter what, if you show up and all the decision makers aren't there, reschedule. Yeah. Can you walk through the property and do all of that? Of course you can, but you're not going to be able to close if they're not all there. So, all right. Any other ground rules that we need to add in here before we get into the brass tacks of actually getting the contract signed? No, let's dive in. So number one is pre-qualification. So a lot of times what we find is we end up pre-qualing at the appointment, which then leads us to not signing because they weren't ready. So a lot of you may have heard of LP Mama. I like to use LTP Mama, location, timeline, uh, price point, motivation, agency, mortgage, and appointment details. Exactly what Aaron said, when you're using this framework and the appointment details, it's who else would be a decision maker on selling the property for top dollar in today's market. Awesome. It's really important that we're all present and setting those expectations. But if we're not pre-qualifying, then we're just walking in blind. And a lot of these things we don't know until we're there. And then it's almost like as if we're playing on defense versus playing on offense. And the goal is for you to always be on the offensive play. Um, yeah. Keep going. Oh, go ahead. Keep going. Oh, I was going to say that one of my favorite things to use in a pre-qualification standard, if you all want to write this down, right now there's what I'm finding out there in the field right now is there's not a lot of seller urgency. Are you all experiencing that, that the urgency is not there? People are like, oh, well, I don't know. Um, maybe this summer, you know. Okay. Yeah. You guys are hearing that too. Okay. I'm going to wait to see what the market does. Okay. So I've got a, a three-step process. I've got to make things really simple for, for me to follow it. And so I have a three-step process on how to narrow in and drive in urgency. And if you want to write this down, it's by when, because, timeline. By when, because, timeline. So for example, how many of you are hearing the uh, waiting for the kids to get out of school? Are you guys hearing that a lot? I know that I've had that come up multiple calls this week. Okay, yeah. So we're gonna use this as an example, but there are multiple examples you can use this for. So I'm waiting for the kids to get out of school. Uh, awesome. So let me ask you, by when do we need to be in the new home? And they say, well, definitely before the new school year starts, right? So August, as an example. Okay, great. I'm gonna validate what they just said because that's because. 
That makes sense. It's motivation. So what I'm hearing you say is we definitely need to get in to the new property before the new school year starts in August. I may build rapport here, obviously, with kiddos and ages and all of that. And then from there, I'm going to uh, forward paste them on timeline. So I'm going to go to my calendar and I'm going to say, so Aaron, today is April 19th. Okay, so even if we were to sign paperwork today, and I'm doing this on the front end, you all, even if we were to sign paperwork today, it typically is a two week turnaround of hitting the market. So that puts us, that would put us about the first week of May, right? Yes. Okay. And what we're finding right now in your specific area is properties, average days on market right now is around 27 days. Okay. So definitely within 30 days, y'all would be under contract. Okay. Got it. Great. Facts trump feelings. Now we would say, so 30 days from May 1st is putting us at the beginning of June. Now we tend to see that closing time averages 30 to 45 days. So now we get an offer beginning of June. We're probably mid-July, which puts us right in that timeline. And that's if we were to sign paperwork today. So just to give you a timeline perspective, if everything that we say makes sense when we come out and meet with you, what would stop us from moving forward on getting the ball rolling such that you can be into your new place by August? I'm setting that framework up to set me up for success. Now you can use the same thing if I can't find what I'm looking for. Um, I'm It's the chicken or the egg, right? Do we have to sell and have those funds before we purchase? Right. And you can narrow that in on the timeline for them based on what it is that they're looking. So buy when, because timeline. And you want to know what that does on the prequel? What we're doing is we're telling them we're coming to take a listing. Right. Because they think we're coming to have a conversation. But when we do that, those three things by when, because, and timeline in that prequel, if we do nothing else, we've now set the stage, we're coming to do business. And that's the whole purpose of the prequel. Awesome. What's next? Well, while we're while we're changing the slide, we'll remind everyone that look at the prequal. The prequal is the beginning of the listing presentation. Correct. That's yep. when the presentation starts. Not when we knock on the door. It's with the prequal. All right, pre-list. Why is that important? All right. So the pre-list is important because we need to make sure we stand out from the competition, all right? And look at, we could, we could spend 10 days talking about pre-list. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what's in it. What matters is that we do it because that's a representation of who you are. You know what, we don't have the luxury in real estate. Well, sometimes we do, where they come into our office, they see all our credentials on the wall, they see a professional environment. We don't have that, right? We're oftentimes going to their house. So what they see is us. So how do we replicate, re, uh, replicate that aura of professionalism? It's through the pre-list package. That's how we show them we have a track record, right? We know what we're doing. We have a plan. And what the pre-list does is it saves you time in the presentation. Instead of having to talk about all the things that we do, we can get to talking about what they want, which we know is price, right? So the pre-list is important. It pre-sells you up front. It shows your professionalism. So you don't have to waste time in the presentation going back through that. Anything you want to add to that, Emily? No, that's- All right. All right, moving on. Next. Okay, so next is the three goals. So when it's really important that when uh, we get to the consultation, we set expectations. Just remember that expectations eliminate objections. Sometimes it feels like we're dancing back and forth, especially with um, really direct or uh, decision makers who sometimes think that they're realtors as well or know more than we do. So it's really important to preface on what the agenda of the time to maximize is versus just walking through um, and not having a framework so we can always stay on pace. So the three goals is setting. So when we sit down at the kitchen table, I'm going to say to Aaron, I'm going to say, awesome, Aaron, we've got three goals for our time together today. First, I want to understand what's important to you about this move such that it could be as simple and stress-free as possible because moving is a lot of work, right? Then he's going to acknowledge that, right? Yes. Okay. 
Awesome. Next, we're going to dive into our unique value proposition and our strategic marketing strategy that's going to yield top dollar in today's market. And we're going to assess what top dollar in today's market is for your home such that you have financial clarity, which is really important, correct? Yep, that would help. Awesome. And last, the next step will be uh, deciding what the best next step is moving forward to getting us one step closer to sold. So, and then I'm going to go into the framework. Um, so setting those expectations will also allow you to kind of bucket your consultation. So you start off again with motivation. What's important to them? What are they looking for in an agent? Then going into your unique value proposition and marketing such that you can go into um, price. Now, here's the thing. If we could go to the next slide, Giselle, thank you. Um, the the Before you go into price, I'm going to give you all the million dollar question that changed our world when it comes to listings. And I know it's changed a ton of people's life um, whenever... <laughs> <laughs> in terms of conversion um, and, and financials is when you, right before you go into price, I want you all to write this question down. I'll repeat it a couple of times. Outside of, outside of um, agreeing on a price that would cause your property to sell for top dollar in today's market, what would stop us from moving forward together today? Outside of agreeing on a price that would cause your property to sell for top dollar in today's market, what would stop us from partnering together on the sale of your home? However you want to, you know, use the ending close, you can make it your own. But the key is before, outside of agreeing on a price that would cause your property to sell for top dollar in today's market, what would stop us from moving forward and signing and getting your home on the market today? So Emily, what I hear you saying, the trick to getting a listing signed is having a system, right? Which is right. which is what we're giving you. So if you guys notice, there's a system here. We pre-qualify, right? We send out a pre-list. Obviously, we don't have time in this call to go through our value proposition. We do that in ML and Mega Listing Agent, right? We do that, and then we ask the trial close, right? right? We're setting them up to sign the contract. Yep. All right, give it to them one more time. Outside of agreeing on a price that would cause your property to sell for top dollar in today's market, what would stop us from moving forward together today and, and getting the property on the market? I love that. Now, this is where they start to pay attention, right? Because now it went from us delivering information to now they start to feel the pressure of us closing them down. Right. Right. Right? We need to create pressure. Just they make decisions when there's pressure. We're now starting to apply the pressure. They will not sign if we don't apply pressure. Agreed? Yep, that's exactly All right. right. All right. All right. Next slide. Okay. So now that's a trial close. Now let's roll into some assumptive closes. Okay. So imagine now we've gone through the marketing, we've done a trial close, correct? Now from trial close, let's now talk about pricing. So they've already agreed on the fact that, you know, there's nothing more we need to do. They feel confident they can sell our home. We now get to pricing and they feel comfortable and confident that the price we talked about here will get their home sold, right? So before we say, great, let's sign the contract. Let's now just throw a couple assumptive closes out there to make sure the answer is gonna be yes, okay? The two favorite assumptive closes that, that I like to use are these. Number one is photos. Great, so what day during the week would be the best to have our photographer come out and shoot the property? Or it could be staging, either one, right? But if we ask the question, before we even sign the contract, right? So if we were to shoot the photos, what day of the week do you think typically works best? If they give a positive answer, then that's a good sign, right? Now another one. So Emily, when we're scheduling showings, what's the best way for us to reach you? Do you want us to text you, call you, or email you? Text. Text. Okay. That's a positive response. Now, if there's two sellers, you could say, which one of you wants to be the main point of contact once we start showings? So, and look, if there's more assumptive closes, however, if you do two assumptive closes, right? One around photos, that was always worth staging, right? That was always my favorite. And then you followed up with one around the showing process. If we get a positive response to both, 
Is it a good chance that if we say, great, are you ready to start the paperwork? The answer is going to be yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we start applying more pressure with assumptive closes, this is their opportunity to now object. Well, you know, I should tell you, we do have another agent coming out. Oh, okay. Tell me more about that. Right. Or, Hey, I should tell you, you know what, we're not, you know, we, we, we do want a night or a day to think about it. We're now putting pressure on to force out, to squeeze the objections out of them. Makes anything you want to add to that? Um, one of my favorite was the day of the week that you hit the market. So we always uh, hit the market on Thursdays. So we would acknowledge the condition of the home and say, hey, I know that you said that you wanted to get, you know, uh, the bathroom painted and you had uh, that uh, storage room to clean out. Outside of those two things, we typically hit the market on Thursday. So would you prefer the Thursday two weeks from now, which would be the 27th, or would you prefer the following, which would be the 6th? So also just identifying the target date of when they're going to go live is also a really good thing to do as well. Love that. All right. So we've now trial closed, got to price, right? Assumptive close, assumptive close. Now it's time for business to happen, correct? We're applying the pressure. Okay. So now we get to what we call the hard close. Now there's no right or wrong way. You know, we'll, we'll share a couple different examples of, of how we do this. What was your what was your favorite hard close? When we finally got to the point of, you know, signing the contract, what was what was your favorite, Emily? Did you have one? Yeah. So for me, I just did the assumptive closes, and then I would say, "Awesome." Well, the next step is just to do the paperwork, which is always my favorite process. <laughs> I'm so analytical. Yeah. And the next step is to start the paperwork. Yep. So we can get you to where it is you want to go. Yep. Right. That's the key. Great. Next step, let's go ahead and start the paperwork so we can get you guys moved into that bigger house. Yep. That's right. That's it. That's the hard close. But it's not hard because we've already done a trial close. We've done assumptive closes. And now it's just simple. Great. Let's start the paperwork so we can get you guys moved in, you know, to where it is you want to go. It's that simple. Look, you could also say, look, now that we're in agreement on price and you feel comfortable and confident we can sell your home, let's go ahead and start the paperwork so we can get you moving to where it is you want to go. That's that's the close, right? That's the close. All right. It, it, can do we have time to go a few, a few? Yeah, we have a couple of minutes. Can we do a few more closes? Is that okay? Absolutely. All right. So Emily, do you feel comfortable and confident that our proactive marketing plan is going to get your home sold? Yep. Great. So are we in agreement that what the market's telling us is four ninety nine is the price that's going to cause your home to sell? Yeah, and obviously, are we in agreement with all the terms of the contract, which of course are the industry standard? Mm -hmm. Good, let's go ahead and review the contract so we can get you guys moved to that next house. That's another one, right? Yep. Here, here's, here's the one that I like, I call this buttering them up, right? Look, you've got a great home, it's in a great area, and you've got fantastic upgrades. So now we can go to trial close or to something close. So what day would work best for us to schedule the photos, right? Once we start showings, which one of you wants to be the main point of contact? Perfect. Let's go ahead and review the contract so we can get you guys moved. Mm -hmm. See how natural that is when you put it all together? Yep. All right. Um, any questions, Emily, before we start the paperwork? No. No? And you could also change that to say, so Emily, what questions do you have before we start the paperwork? Yeah. That's another one, right? Emily, have I answered all your questions before we review the contract? Yep. I think too, Aaron, one of the things that I see a lot as well is when people have work to do, or maybe they're not quite ready to hit the market and agents will not get the paperwork signed and they will walk away without getting it signed, assuming oh. that they're going to sign at a specific time. So one of the things that I highly recommend is get the paperwork signed and use that target date of yeah. when they're going to go live on the market and what week that you would do, right? Work it back. What week That's would be best for photos um, just to get it signed such that you don't have a bunch of people on your hot sheet or your hot sheet keeps growing. Um, and well, now more, growing up. more importantly, and we'll wrap up on this thought, right? If you walk out of there without a signed contract, no matter how great of a job you did, no matter how great your presentation was, no matter how much they loved you, right? Even if you sat there and prayed with them about it, if you walk out of there without a signed agreement, 
you have less than a 25% chance of getting assigned. Why, you ask? Because guess what they're going to do the next day when they wake up and go to work? They're going to tell their coworkers, hey, you won't believe how much your house was worth. Our agent was over last night and they said we can get 500000 for it. What? You're selling your house now? You got to talk to my sister. Did you sign anything? Not. It's going to get poached, right? They're going to be at the gym working out with their buddies, right? Hey, guess how much our house is worth? Oh, you're selling your house. You got to talk to my niece, right? That listing is going to get poached faster than you can imagine if you walk out of there without it getting signed. Not because they don't love you, not because you didn't do a great job. That's just what happens. Yep. So for all of you that are big fans of, I'll get back to the office and DocuSign it, guess what? Take a contract with you, slide it across the table, press hard and sign. There you have it. So what happens on May 3rd? May 3rd is our next launch of the mega listing agent. So a lot of times we get asked, uh, Aaron and I, on what does the mega listing agent cover? So we cover listings from A to Z. We start off with what are the um, what makes you the, Gary always talks about being the economist of choice, right? So as a listing agent or an, as an agent who is looking to take more market share by growing with listings, which we know it's leads, listings, leverage, right? The three L's of real estate. Our goal is to start off in that order. So what are the numbers that we need to know? What do we need to be versed in as a listing agent? What are the lead sources and how do we maximize the lead sources that are converting at the highest rate right now in today's market and the shifting market? And also, you know, we give you pre the full prequel script, pre-list package. Um, we go through the full listing consultation, the top objection handlers, and we have a fun role play dialogue on uh, objection handlers that people will give us um, that are in the course. And then we go through listing steps. So this is also great for if you have inside sales agents or you have um, uh, listing managers or transaction coordinators or um, it, it, what needs to happen on client care on a listing um, because some of our markets have a longer days on market than we were experiencing. So there's something called client care, price reductions, things that we weren't experiencing. So how do we get versed in those conversations and what is the system that would yield not only a five-star experience and yet give us a referral to go put a sign in another yard. Yeah, so look at, there's one thing that we know is that you guys need more listings. And if you want to spend the next eight weeks with us, right, going over exactly how to do that from the conversations to the, to the management of it, to the appointment, to all of it, sign up today. It's a fantastic course. I would say it's undervalued. Wouldn't you agree, Emily? This is probably yeah. the best deal KW well, has going right now. Yeah, well, what's interesting is we we wrapped up our last uh, session back in March, and I'll just share really quick with you all. Um, we had an agent, and she actually personally reached out to me, and she was not focused on listings, was doing dual, um, had a small team, and they just weren't hitting their listing numbers. And so she was like, mm, do I really want to take it? Do they really know what they're talking about? So she took it, and I now coach her and her team. and through the course, she was taking at least four listings per month. And she had not done that consistently ever in her career. So whether you're just getting started or you're looking to scale again, our team was taking over 50 listings a month. These systems scale at all levels of team um, and invite your team on. Uh, we all learn together. So from lead generation to listings, to systems and processes and sustainability, um, yeah, there's nothing more important than listings right now. Yeah, listings never go out of style. And here's the other thing that you guys have to understand is as the market conditions are tough for a lot of you guys, I know I was chatting with someone here about it, right? We hear the complaint all the time. Well, they won't list because there's nothing for them to buy. You know what then? We better focus on the four Ds, death, divorce, drugs, disability. And in MLA, we talk about exactly how to go target that source so you guys can find more listings now. That's exactly so, right. I would say, how do we do on our clothes? <laughs> do we close well? <laughs> yes. Sign up today, guys. Anyway, awesome. thanks for being here. May 3rd. Make sure you snap that. And we have a promo code for them, do we not? 
Uh, yeah. So Hannah's going to drop the promo code just for yeah. being a part of today's session. We're going to give you all 15% off as a show of our gratitude. So we will see you all on May 3rd, and we're going to go take more market share and listings together. Bye, see everyone. Everybody.